Hey guys, ever wondered how to magically pull Facebook page posts straight into a Google Sheet without breaking a sweat? Well, today we're diving into the world of data scraping to show you exactly how to do just that. But here's the kicker. While it sounds like tech wizardry, you don't need to be a coding genius to get it done. Stay tuned because by the end of this video, you'll not only know how to scrape Facebook page posts, but how to automate the whole process like a pro. So first of all, thank you for coming back and a big welcome to all of the new subscribers joining us today. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jake Dawson, and I'm here to bring you the latest in AI sales automation and workflow hacks in a way that's easy to understand and apply. And as always, remember that everything we cover here is designed to help you succeed. These are not just theories, but actionable strategies that you can use right now. Now, if you're new here or looking for even more ways to level up, don't forget to check out our school community link below. Inside, you'll find exclusive make.com templates, including the one that we're using today, that you can import directly and start using immediately. We've built a whole space for learners and doers just like you, where you can ask questions, get direct help, and connect with like-minded folks ready to take action. And of course, you can always subscribe and hit that bell button to get notified of our bi-weekly videos, live sessions, and more. Let's jump right in. So why scrape Facebook page posts into a Google Sheet? Imagine keeping tabs on your favorite pages, analyzing trends, or even just having a well-organized archive of posts all without lifting a finger. Sounds good, right? Today, I'll walk you through how to set this up step-by-step -step using Google Sheets, Appify, and Make.com. Think of it like having your own personal assistant for Facebook data, minus the coffee breaks. Now, if this is the first video you're watching in this Facebook scraping series, I'd recommend checking out the previous ones for some context. The links are in the description, so don't worry about hunting them down. All right, first things first, let's set up Google Sheets, open Google Drive, head over to your Facebook scraping folder. If you don't have one, go ahead and create that. Now, right click, select Google Sheets, and name it Facebook Page Post Scraping. Easy, right? Inside that, name the first tab Sheet 1, or just leave it as is, and set up your first column as Page. This is where you'll list all of the Facebook pages you want to scrape. You can add multiple pages, and it'll scrape them one by one. Now, let's add another sheet for the actual data. Click that little plus sign at the bottom, name this sheet Data, and set up the columns. You're going to need columns for the page URL, poster ID, page name, post URL, post texts, video URL, thumbnail, post dates, likes, views, comments, and images. Because this is basically all of the good stuff that you want to capture. All right, now that Google Sheets is ready to go, let's talk about the tool that's going to do all the heavy lifting, Appify. If you've never heard of it, think of it as a web scraping powerhouse. It's designed to pull structured data from websites like Facebook pages without you having to manually copy and paste anything. Sounds nice, right? All right, time to get to work. First, head over to appify.com and log in. If you don't already have an account, sign up. It's free to start. Once you're in, look at the left sidebar and find the store section. Click on that and in the search bar, type Facebook Pages Scraper. You'll see a bunch of options, but you want the one that's by CaproLock. This, this one works really reliably and it won't give you a headache. Click on it and you'll land on the Actors page. Now, before we jump in, let's talk pricing because let's be real. No one wants to set something up only to realize it costs an arm and a leg later. This Appify actor gives you a free trial for one day, which is actually perfect because you can test everything, scrape a ton of data, and see if it works for you. Plus, new users on Appify get $5 in free credit, so technically, you're getting a little bonus. If you decide to keep using it, plans start at $29 per month, which isn't bad considering how much time this saves. Take a quick look at what this scraper does. It should match exactly what we need grabbing Facebook post data like texts, URLs, engagement numbers, and all that good stuff. Once you're good with that, let's set it up. Now, here's where things get fun. First, you need to paste a Facebook page URL into the input field. Pick any public page you want just to test things out. Once that's in, you'll see a bunch of other options. Go ahead and delete anything that's not related to pages. We wanna keep things clean for now. Now let's decide how many posts we want to scrape. 
To start, set it to 20. This way we can test if everything works without pulling a massive amount of data. Next, we've got date range options. This is useful if you're looking for posts from a specific time period. If you wanna grab recent posts, set post newer than to a recent date, like a week or a month ago. If you wanna go way back, you can set post older than to a past date. It's totally up to you. Once that's set, hit save and start. Now, go grab a coffee, stretch, or pretend you're being productive because this might take a few minutes. When it's done, head over to the runs page to check out your results. If everything looks good, you're ready for automation. Now, let's take this a step further and make it completely hands-free with make.com. If you've never used it before, think of this as an automation tool that connects different apps and makes them talk to each other. In this case, we're going to use it to pull the scrape data from Appify and send it straight to Google Sheets automatically. First, log into make.com on the left, Click Scenarios. If you're new here, this page will look pretty empty, but no worries, we're about to fix that. In the top right corner, click Create a New Scenario. Name it something like Facebook Page Post Scraper so you don't lose track of this later. Now, we need to kick things off with Google Sheets. Click the big plus sign, search for Google Sheets, and select Search Rows. This is going to check for new Facebook pages to scrape. But before it can do anything, you need to connect your Google account. Click on Add or Connect to Google Sheets. Then hit Sign in with Google. Follow the prompts. It's just the usual give permission process. And once it's connected, you're set. Now, let's tell Make.com which sheet to look at. In the Spreadsheet dropdown, search for Facebook Page Post Scraping. That's the file we created earlier. For the sheet name, choose Sheet 1 or whatever you named it. This is the sheet where we listed our Facebook pages. So Make.com needs to check this every time it runs. Click Save, and boom, the first step is done. Now, let's bring Appify into the mix. Click the plus sign again, search for Appify, and select Run an Actor. This basically means we're telling Make.com to start the scraper whenever it finds a new Facebook page. Before it can run, though, we need to connect Appify to Make.com. Click on Add or Connect Appify, and it'll ask for an API token. This is basically a special key that lets Make.com talk to Appify. To get it, follow the link that they provide, you'll be taken to Integrations and API. You'll see a section called API Tokens. Click on the copy icon next to your token, then come back to make.com and paste it into the API Token field. Hit Save, and now Appify and make.com are officially connected. All right, now let's tell Appify exactly what to do. In the Actor dropdown, search for Facebook Pages Scraper by CaproLock, and then select it. This is the same scraper we set up earlier, so we're just linking it here. Under Run Synchronously, select Yes. This makes sure that Make.com waits for Appify to finish scraping before moving on to the next step. If we leave it off, Make.com will keep running before the scraper is done, and that can mess up our results. So yeah, set it to Yes. Now, here's where we need to bring in JSON. This sounds fancy, but don't worry, it's just a way of telling Appify exactly what to scrape. Go back to Appify, find the Manual or JSON button, and click on JSON. You'll see a block of code, highlight everything, copy it, and bring it back to make.com. In make.com, there's a field labeled Input JSON. Paste the JSON code there, but make sure to right-click and choose Paste and Match Style, so everything stays formatted the right way. Now, in that JSON code, look for a section that says URL or has a placeholder link. That's the part that tells Appify what Facebook page to scrape. Delete that placeholder URL and replace it with the dynamic data from Google Sheets. Scroll down to Search Rows and select the column where your Facebook page URLs are stored. This makes sure that Make.com dynamically grabs each new Facebook page and adds it to your sheet. Click Save, and now that part's done. Let's pull the results from Appify to get them into Google Sheets now. Click on the plus sign to add a new module. Search for Appify and select Get Dataset Items. This tells Make.com to fetch the scraped data once Appify is done running. In the Settings, look for Dataset ID. Instead of manually adding something, scroll down and you'll see a Dataset ID field from the first Appify module that we set up. Click on that, it'll automatically pull in the right data set every time the scraper runs. 
Next, we need to tell it how many results to retrieve. In the limit field, type 20. That means it'll grab the latest 20 posts, but you can adjust this based on how much data you want to collect. Keep in mind that larger numbers might slow things down, especially if you're scraping a really active Facebook page. Click Save, and now we're really ready to test. At the top of the screen, click Run Once. This will trigger the whole workflow and let us see if everything is working correctly. Give it a few minutes to run. Scraping is an instant, and Appify needs time to collect the data. When it's done, click into the results from the Appify module. You should see two types of posts, some that contain images and some that are just texts. This is important because we need to process them differently. Now let's add a way to tell make.com how to handle different post types. Click on the plus sign again and search for router. This will help us split the data into separate paths, depending on whether the post contains an image or not. Think of it like a traffic signal for your automation. Text posts go one way, image posts go another. Inside the router, click to add a new module and search for Iterator. Select it, and in the input field, choose the media URL array from the Appify module. What this does is check how many images a post has. If there's at least one image, it gets processed as an image post. If it has no images, it gets handled as a text post. All right, now that we've got our Iterator set up, this is to handle the image post. Let's run a quick test to make sure everything is flowing the way it should. Click on Run Once at the bottom of the screen. This will trigger the entire automation, and you'll see data start moving through the different steps. Keep an eye on the Iterator module. It should show a breakdown of the data it's pulling from Appify. Now, let's talk about images. Facebook posts can contain multiple images, and we want to make sure that they all end up in Google Sheets properly. And that's where the array aggregator comes in. Click the plus sign to add a new module after the iterator. Search for array aggregator and select it. For the source module, choose iterator, since that's what's handling the different image URLs. In the aggregated fields, click on value, then hit save. This will take all the images from a post and organize them neatly instead of making a mess inside of Google Sheets. Next, we need to actually send this data over to Google Sheets. Click the plus sign again and search for Google Sheets and pick the module that allows you to add a new row. Now, let's link it to the correct spreadsheet. In the Spreadsheet ID field, look for the Facebook Scraping folder. Then select Facebook Page Posts Scraping. Make sure the sheet name is set to Data. This is where all of our scrape results are going to be stored. Now, let's start mapping the data into the right columns. The first column should be the page URL. Grab this from the Google Sheet module that originally pulled in the page list. Next, find the column for the Facebook page name and map it to the page name field from the Appify module. Do the same for poster ID, post URL, post text, video URL, thumbnail, post date, likes, views, and comments. You're basically just matching up the scraped data to its correct place in Google Sheets. All right, now let's make sure we handle images correctly. Since each post can have multiple images, we need to make sure that they each get their own space in the sheet. Inside the image column, we're going to pull data from the array aggregator module that we set up earlier. If you ran another test and checked the aggregator results, you should see an output that lists all the images as separate values inside an array. We'll pull each one individually into separate columns. Click on the Images column and type a number between the square brackets, like 1. This grabs the first image in the list. Now copy this value and paste it into the next few columns, but change the number inside the brackets from 1 to 2, 3, 4, and so on, so that it can store up to 6 or more images per post. If a post has fewer than 6 images, some of these columns will just stay empty, no problem. Once everything is mapped out, hit the Save button. Next, we need to create a filter for image posts. Right now, all the posts are getting processed as the same way, but we need to tell make.com, hey, if this post has images, send it down this path instead of mixing it with the text-only posts. To do this, go to the router where we set up the different paths and click on the little tools icon in the line leading to the image processing module. This opens the filter settings. Label this filter image posts so it's easy to find later. Now we're going to add a condition. 
Now click on the function dropdown and choose length. Click on the first field and select the media URL array from the Appify module. This is the part of the data that holds all of the image links. What this does is count how many images are in the post. Then set the condition to greater than and type zero. This means if a post contains at least one image, it will pass through this filter and follow this path. Click save and that part is done. Now we need to send these text posts to Google Sheets. Select the module that allows you to add a new row. Instead of setting up everything from scratch, let's save some time. Right click on the existing Google Sheets module from the first path and select clone. This creates an identical module that we can now use specifically for text posts. Open the clone Google Sheets module and review all the pre-filled columns. Since this module is handling image posts, everything should already be mapped correctly. The only thing we need to do is make sure we don't have the images columns. So remove them now, then click save. All right, text posts are now taken care of. So now let's make sure that they're handled correctly. Go back to the router and click on the tools icon for the second path, the one that ha handles posts without images. This opens another filter settings window. Name this one text posts so it's clear what it does. Set the conditions the same way we did for images, but this time choose equal to and type zero. This tells make.com if the post has zero images, send it down this path. Click save and now the router knows exactly where to send each post type. Now for the fun part, testing the whole thing. Click on run once to see the whole thing in action. You'll notice posts being processed separately with image posts flowing into the first Google Sheet module and text posts going into the second one. Watch as everything gets neatly organized into Google Sheets post by post. And that's it. You now have a fully automated system that scrapes Facebook posts, checks if they contain images, sorts them into the right categories and stores everything in Google Sheets. You can add new Facebook pages to scrape whenever you want. And the whole thing runs automatically. No more manually copying and pasting, no more messy spreadsheets, just structured, organized data with zero effort. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more easy to follow automation tips. And if you're serious about taking your automation game to the next level, check out our school community. It's linked below and inside you will find exclusive templates, resources, and a supportive group of like-minded people ready to help you succeed. Plus the exact template that we use today is in there, so don't miss it. Oh, and before you click away, here's a video you'll probably wanna watch next. It's packed with even more tips to help you crush it with automation. See you there.